Welcome. Thank you for joining our NSolver video tutorial series. In this lesson, we will review QC checks of gene expression data and provide instruction on how to implement them within NSolver software. The first step in analysis of nanostring gene expression data is to perform a QC check. It's an important step in the analysis process since it allows you to assess the technical performance of the assay in each sample lane. The screen capture here from NSolver software shows the four QC metrics that are evaluated as a routine part of the data import process. These metrics include imaging, binding density, positive control linearity, and positive control limit of detection. Let's discuss these QC metrics one by one and learn why they are important and how to interpret them. First, let's talk about imaging and how to assess its performance through the imaging QC metric. On the far left side of the screen, we have a picture of one of our cartridges. This cartridge can process 12 samples at a time. In the middle of the screen, we have a zoomed in version of a lane for one of the 12 samples. This lane contains the streptavin encoded slide to which all of the hybridization complexes bind through the biotin on the end of the capture probe. When the instrument images the slide, it does not scan the entire surface area at once. Instead, the total surface area is broken up into individual pieces or sub-areas, which we call FOV or field of view. These FOV are scanned one at a time, and after all of the FOV have been scanned, and all of the barcodes have been counted within each FOV, then the counts are summed up across all FOVs to generate total counts for the entire sample. To assess the performance of this imaging process, we calculate the imaging QC metric. This metric is simply a ratio. It is equal to the number of FOV that have been successfully scanned, which we call FOV counted, divided by the total number of FOV that were attempted to be scanned, which we call FOV count. NSolver will display the values of FOV counted, FOV count, and imaging QC in a table that can be reviewed after the QC check is run. The next QC metric is binding density. Binding density is equal to the number of fluorescent spots per square micron that are bound to the slide surface. This value is calculated for each sample. Why is binding density important? If there are too many molecules bound to the slide, then the barcodes can lie very close to each other and they can even overlap. When this happens, the scanner can have difficulty resolving individual barcodes from each other. In rare and extreme cases, if the density gets too high, the slide can saturate, data can be lost, and linearity of the data can be impacted. Binding density is a metric that can be evaluated after an experiment has been run, and it can potentially be used to guide input amount for future runs if desired. There are several factors that influence binding density. The first is the amount of RNA loaded into the assay. More input mass leads to a higher binding density, and that relationship between the two is generally linear within a certain range of density. That relationship can begin to lose linearity as the density gets too high. The second factor is the number of targets being quantified. A panel of 800 genes will generally lead to a higher binding density than a panel of 20 genes. The third factor is expression level of the genes being quantified. Highly expressed genes generate a higher binding density than lowly expressed genes. A fourth parameter that can impact binding density is degradation of RNA. In general, degraded RNA will tend to generate lower binding density than undegraded RNA because an undegraded RNA sample will contain more and longer intact RNA molecules that the nanostring probes can hybridize to. However, the random and uncertain nature of degradation makes this relationship less predictable than the previous three factors mentioned. An important point to emphasize here is that the upper limit of binding density is conservative. A binding density flag does not necessarily indicate assay failure. In many if not most cases, if NSolver gives a QC flag for high binding density, the data are likely to be fine and you can safely proceed with your analysis. A QC flag for high binding density is meant to be a caution flag, letting you know that the density is starting to approach the upper limits and that you should examine the data to confirm that everything looks okay. The last two QC metrics 
evaluate the performance of exogenous positive and negative controls that are spiked into every sample. These controls are based on ERCC sequences. These are nucleotide sequences that have been identified by the external RNA control consortium to show minimal homology to the endogenous transcripts that you wish to quantify. This makes them ideal sequences to use as controls in the gene expression assay. ERCCs are not unique to nanostring. They have been utilized in other gene expression technologies as well. The positive controls are a set of in vitro transcribed RNAs that are spiked into every sample in a six level linear dilution series. The concentrations range from 0.125 to 128 femtomolar. Capture probes and reporter probes for the positive controls are contained within the capture probe and reporter probe reagent tubes, respectively, and the in vitro transcribed RNAs are located in the reporter probe reagent tube. The capture and reporter probes for the negative controls are also contained within their respective probe reagent tubes. However, in this case, no target transcript is spiked into or present in the assay. These negative controls give us an idea of the nonspecific signal of the assay, which can be used to establish the background threshold or the limit of detection. Now that we have discussed the positive and negative controls, let's examine the two QC metrics that assess their performance. Positive control linearity QC is calculated independently for every sample in an experiment. It is dependent upon and assesses the performance of the positive controls. A high positive control linearity indicates robust assay performance and linearity of the data. The graph and table shown here represent just one sample and will be used to illustrate how the metric is calculated and interpreted for each sample in an experiment. The table on the right shows the concentration and raw counts of the positive controls for this representative sample. To assess the linearity, a Pearson correlation analysis is performed. Both concentration and raw counts are log transformed, and the log transformed data are plotted with concentration on the x axis and raw counts on the y axis. Then, r squared, also known as the coefficient of determination, is calculated. This r squared value is the actual value of the positive control linearity metric, and it is displayed within a table in NSolver. There is one technical note to mention. Positive control F is technically below the limit of detection specs for the assay, and for that reason, it is not included in the linearity calculation. However, many times you will observe that positive F is actually greater than the limit of detection. The final QC metric to discuss is the limit of detection. In this metric, the performance of the positive controls is compared to the performance of the negative controls. This QC check confirms that the positives are sufficiently or significantly higher than the negatives, and when that's true, the assay is performing with excellent limit of detection and sensitivity. Just like all of the other QC metrics, limit of detection is calculated separately for every sample in an experiment. The graph and table shown here will be used to illustrate how the metric is calculated and interpreted for one representative sample. In the table on the top right, the concentration and raw counts for the positive controls are shown. In the table in the bottom right, the raw counts for each of the negative controls are shown. The figure in the middle is a scatter plot, with the concentration and raw counts of the positive controls plotted, just like in the previous slide. To calculate the limit of detection metric, the arithmetic mean of the negative controls plus two standard deviations is calculated. That value is plotted on the graph here as a red horizontal line. This value is then compared to the raw counts of positive control E. If positive control E is higher, then the sample passes the limit of detection QC check, and the assay is confirmed to have robust limit of detection and sensitivity. It is important to note that the data are not log transformed for this calculation. The figure here is plotted with log2 transformed data for easy visualization and instructional purposes only. It is not reflective of the actual calculations. The calculations are performed with raw, non-log transform data. Now that we have discussed the four QC metrics, let's switch to a demo with an NSolver so we can learn how to implement them and view the results. The QC checks are automatically run as a routine part of the data import process. 
This has been covered in detail in our other NSolver video lessons. Written instructions for this process can also be found in the NSolver manual. For now, we will import 12 raw data files that we want to analyze. The nanostring raw data files are text files with an extension of .rcc. We will use the raw data menu to browse through our RCC files, select the ones we want to import, click open, and then we will be brought automatically to the QC configuration window after we click next at the bottom of this screen here. As shown in the slides that we discussed a few minutes ago, NSolver will run four QC checks for the gene expression assay to assess the technical performance in each sample lane. Imaging, binding density, positive control linearity, and positive control limit of detection QC are calculated by the software. Additional or different QC metrics may be available for different analytes, such as for DNA in the CNV or SNV assay. You will notice that it's possible to change the default values of the QC thresholds using the up and down arrows adjacent to the numbers. However, we don't recommend that you change them unless you have a specific reason to do so. To initiate the QC check, click on the Import button at the bottom right of the window. After the QC has been completed, all of the QC windows will close. It's important to note here that in the top left of the NSolver window, we are in the Raw Data tab. On the far left, make sure that you have clicked on the name of the panel or RLF for your samples. When you do that, you will then see in the middle of NSolver a table containing all of the samples that have been imported for that panel, including all data from previous experiments that have been imported. Each sample is represented as one row in the table. To check the QC results, first look at the QC flag column. If any of the QC checks did not pass for any of the samples, there will be a small yellow flag icon in this column for the sample that did not pass. More specific details are provided in the columns to the right. These columns indicate which specific QC metrics did not pass, such as imaging QC or binding density. The first time you run the QC check, you may not be able to see all available columns in this table. To view these additional columns, take your mouse and right-click anywhere on the header for the table. When you right-click, you will see an option to Show All Hidden Columns. After that is clicked on, you will then be able to inspect the actual values of all the QC metrics for all of the samples. I'll reiterate here that the default QC value thresholds within NSolver are conservative. So if any of the QC values do not pass, that doesn't necessarily indicate assay failure. The QC flags are meant to be a caution, indicating that the data should be inspected closer to make sure everything looks okay. Thank you for joining us for this overview of QC checks for the gene expression assay. If you have additional questions, please contact Nanostring Support by email at support at nanostring.com or by phone at 888- 358-6266. Please continue your education by following our video training curriculum at the website listed here. Thank you.